I recently made a clone of a popular beer by using yeast culture from a bottle of that popular beer. You want to see more about it? Stick around. Hello and welcome back. Recently I had made a beer, a Bell's Oberon clone. I had done a video on this several videos back now where I brewed a batch of Bell's Oberon, a clone recipe that they provided the recipe for, and I decided to brew some of that with yeast cultured from one of their own bottles of Oberon. I had mentioned in that video if there was interest in learning how I cultured that yeast to let me know and I would follow through with the video just like I am here now. And a lot of you responded in the comments and on social media asking for that very thing. So crack a beer, sit back, and see how I did it. First of all, there's a number of things that you need to do this, including one to three bottles of Bell's Oberon, a couple of Erlenmeyer flasks, only one is shown here though, some foil and a stir bar, scale and a bowl, dry malt extract, and a stir plate. Let's get moving. Refrigerate your beer upright in the cold fridge for up to a week to precipitate the yeast to the bottom of the bottle. Weigh out 4 grams of dry malt extract. Add it to the Erlenmeyer flask. Measure out 75 milliliters of chlorine-free water and add it to the flask. I also like to add a little yeast nutrient to my yeast starters. Then I crimp a bit of foil on top and put it on top of the stove and bring it to a boil. I let it boil for 15 minutes. While the yeast starter is cooling, I go ahead and open the bottle of the bottle of beer. Flame the opening for several seconds to kill any bacteria and other germs around it. Being just a wee bit paranoid, I decided to go ahead and give it a little spray with some star sand too. Then I pour off most of the bottle, leaving about a half inch of beer left in the bottom. I then swirl the bottle to stir up the yeast on the bottom of the bottle back into the beer to make sure it's all in suspension and none is still left stuck to the bottom of the bottle. I'll repeat this for every bottle I'm going to use. Now I set out three bottles, I ended up only using two and you could even possibly just use as little as one. Using more though gives you a greater margin of safety in case you can't get enough yeast from one bottle. I ended up just using the two as you see here and it worked out fine. Hold on a moment while I take care of this beer. I take the foil off the flask and make sure the yeast is suspended still by swirling the bottle one more time and pour it into the flask. I do this for both bottles. I spray the inside of the foil with some star sand, put it back on top of the flask and give it a cramp. Swirl it up and off we go. I'm going to add my stir bar into my flask using a magnet to help guide it down so it doesn't crack the bottom of the flask. Turn on my stir plate, adjust the speed, get the bar spinning and off we go. Now we just wait. This first starter took a couple days to complete. I knew it was done when the foam receded and it was ready for the next step. I weighed out 40 grams of dry malt extract and added it to a new flask or other vessel if you don't have a flask. Now I add 750 milliliters of chlorine-free water. I put it over the stove and got it to a boil. I let that cool. I take both flasks and put them side by side and remove the foil caps on them. I spray around the top lips of both flasks with some star sand to sanitize them. Then I swirl up to the new starter and pour it into the other starter with the yeast. I add the sanitized foil back on top, crimp it a little bit and put the newly combined starter on the stir plate. This step also took a few days. And there's the finished product. And that's how I did it. And it turned out very well. Got a sample of the Oberon clone right here that I brewed with that yeast. Still good, still good. So thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.